Okay, so this is the second part of the last video I have uploaded, which is for Hack, oh, hack LN OS. Um, basically, in this, this video is going to be very short. Uh, we're going to do the post exploitation phase. Uh, and we're going to get, get root access. I'm going to show you how to get the root access for this machine. Actually, uh, as far as the root team is concerned, we are now in the post exploitation phase. Okay, now we need to prove that after getting, um, wait, okay, so after getting the limited shell on the machine, we need to prove that uh, there is um, uh, a vulnerability or a misconfiguration in the current machine that would enable us to get root access on the machine and prove to the client that yes, there are misconfigurations that you need to take care of. Okay, so for this machine, okay, during every test, during every test, the uh, you need to search for misconfigurations first. Okay, so after getting root, after getting limited shell on the system, you can issue some commands like id to see what are which is the user that are currently logged in with. Okay. And you can use or use from my. Okay. Um, another useful command is displaying the current version of the of the uh, Linux installed. So you can do that by cat rook version. Um, this information is, is very useful because you can use this information and try to find whether the version of the system that's installed has um, vulnerability or is unpatched or et cetera. You know, this is a very important piece of information you need to take care of or you need to know when testing. Okay, now for this machine, uh, we need to know what are the files or the programs that have the SUID bit set. Okay, what does that mean? And let me, for example, go to some directory to explain the idea for you. So home ls. Uh, okay. Let me go to etc. For example. Or let me search for uh, in the current directory. We're gonna try to find a file. Let's say five or seven six six. I think I forgot to type something um, dash before the uh, permissions. So um, find Okay, let me try something else. Okay, so to, to explain this, this, we need to understand that whenever you see the X here, it means that there is an execution right, okay, for, for the root user, okay? If you see in instead of X, if there is an S in instead of X, Okay, it means that the SUID bit is set on this file or on this program or on this directory, whatever. Okay, which means that the current user, whether it's www data, okay, or any other user can execute this program or binary or anything, okay, under the root permissions. Okay, this is the fruit of SUID. So whenever you are testing, you need to search and you need to look for files or programs in the system that have the SUID set, okay? So that you know, okay, that this file or this program can run as root, okay? Which means that the user 
the current user, which is, for example, uh, uh, which is www data, okay, can run this file as root permission or as root, okay, or under the root uh, permissions or as an owner or under the ownership permission, okay. Um, sometimes system administrator use this functionality, okay, to so instead of uh, giving um, or escalating or the privilege of the current user to root, okay, to run some files. So they give the uh, file in need, okay, the SUID bit instead of execution, they set the S so that the current user who is unprivileged most of the time uh, can run this file under the ownership permission, okay. So sometimes it's useful, okay, but sometimes it has some disadvantages. So, so let's run our search and try to find what are the files, what are the binaries, what are the programs that have the SUID set. So tail, oh, not tail, sorry, find. So in, in the current directory we are in, we are in CD home, I think. So let's go back. Okay, so find in the current directory, or not in the current directory, I think. Let's say that, okay. If you want to find, if you want to search in the current directory, you just type dot. Okay, so type, which is fine. And for the permissions, if you want to look for the SUID, you need to type four, okay? Okay. For stands for look for any file or binary that have the SUID set, okay? And we're gonna continue on and type 000. zero, zero. Uh, yep. Oh, fine. Uh, Okay, so let's go through these. So we got these binaries that have the SCID. So for the password, password new grip, uh, actually these files or these binaries need to run under the S, uh, need to run under the ownership permission, which is root. Okay, so it doesn't mean that they have these configurations. The same goes for sue, mount, unmount. They usually have the SUID bit set, okay? So, but there is tail, okay, which ha which have the SUID bit set. Let's go to directory of tail to see, get more information. Um, tail. Um, let's pipe that. Okay, so as you can see, tail, so instead of X, which is execution, okay, it has S, which means that tail, okay, can be run by our user, which is www data under root permissions, okay. So although tail, okay, this file is owned by root, okay, we can execute this file or this program or this binary under the root permissions because it has the SUID set. Okay, so how we can use this um, this configuration to gain root access? Okay, so it's very clear that we don't have sudo uh, um, and www data. This user is not listed under the sudoers. So how can we use tail to find? Or to escalate our permissions. Uh, sorry, privileges. The most obvious, the obvious, the obvious answer is we need to uh, use tail to display the contents of the shadow file, which has the password for the root user. Let's try our luck. So tail. My keyboard doesn't work or okay. So tail, okay. So in order 
we need to display all the content of the shadow file. We need to use a functionality of tail to display everything, okay, which is dash C 1G, okay. If you add this to the tail, means that tail will display everything inside the target file. So we're gonna instruct tail to display the content of shadow file. As you can see, we were able to get the, the hash, the hashed version of the password for the user root. Okay. And also this is a misconfiguration. This is, I mean, this file, shadow, or not shadow actually, tail. So the main misconfiguration here is tail where was given the SEO ID set. So tail has been misused to read the content of a file that should not be read by a non-privileged user. Okay. So after this step, okay, after this step, you're gonna grab this, okay, you're gonna copy that, and you're gonna go and create a file and put that in a file, and the rest is password cracking. So let me let me minimize this uh, interface over here instance. Okay. So so again, let's join the ripper. Okay, and your hash file is the file in which you pasted the hash, and then you you will specify your word list. Okay. I have did this before, and as you can see, the password is John. So the username is root, and the password is John. Now. Of course, you're gonna take the client authorization before applying this, or before going, uh, sorry, before, wait, uh, okay. So before moving on and applying this or escalating your privilege on the client machine, you need to take the authorization that you can get root access. So, so root, that so I think I need to uh, uh, so I'm looking for a way to do that. So let me grab my Python TTY. I'm searching for this in my uh, in my files. So then the testing, okay. Okay. So let's put Python import let's say uh, bin h or bin bash which is better okay so root and the password is John. As you can see, we got root access. Okay. Now, as far as read, read team is concerned, you will stop here. Okay. Since you provide uh, the proof of concept that you were able to get root access. Okay. Now, as far as the machine is concerned, okay, you're going to need to search for the flag. And I'm not interested in this at all. Okay. Since we are doing this, okay. Uh, from the perspective of red team or blue team, I am not interested in going further and looking for the uh, flag because this is not, I mean, this is not what they're gonna encounter in real life, okay? And for this machine, you're gonna find the flag after you log in to the SSH server. And the credential for the 
SSH server, you're going to find this in the MySQL database. How to find the credentials for the MySQL database? You're going to go to var. And here you're going to cat. There will be config. And you will find the password and username and, username and password for the database. Okay, which is WordPress, WordPress. But this is the, the database name is DB actually. So you're gonna go and ping. Okay. So you can see here that the DP IP address is 172, etc. So you're gonna go to MySQL, specify the host. Uh, username WordPress, password WordPress. And you will log in and you will find the SSH credentials inside MySQL table, inside one of the table, which is very, I mean, blatantly unrealistic. Okay. You're not going to find <laughs> a piece of credentials in some sort of um, MySQL table that system A administrator uh, has, has forgot to delete it or he, he, some kind of purposely add it or whatever. So that's it for this video. I hope you like it and found it helpful. And of course, we're gonna see you in the next video.